What's going on everybody? It's been a few weeks, but we're back with my Thursday night football film preview or the Thursday night curse of TFG as it's become known. Today we're going to be going through a veteran quarterback, Derek Carr, who's actually been playing football at a very high level the last few weeks. It's an interesting time to do this as he's set to play here on Thursday night. Now, considering this offseason, there was very serious discussion on whether or not it's time for the Raiders to actually move on from Derek Carr. I wanted to dive into what kind of quarterback he is, what sort of ceiling he has as a player, and how I believe the Raiders should approach their future with Derek Carr. Now, before we hop in, I do want to ask you all real quick to please hit that like button if you enjoy. And if you really enjoy my film breakdowns, I wanted to remind you that you can get four QB film breakdowns each month available on my Patreon. You're also going to get access to my weekly picks and early access to videos. The links for those are in the description below. If you're interested, do check that out. So we're going to do this really similar to my Daniel Jones breakdown, though it I think is going to be a little shorter because we do have a good understanding already on a lot more film on Derek Carr. There's only like three games on Daniel Jones at the time. Um, so basically, here are my traits that I use for evaluating the quarterback position. We're going to go through all of these individual traits, and then by the end, we're going to give an actual position ranking for Derek Carr amidst other NFL QBs and talk about the future of the Raiders a little bit. So let's start with arm strength and accuracy. To me, none of these are a particular concern. In fact, I actually think that uh, all three of these, arm strength and accuracy, quick and impact, are a particular strength of Derek Carr. Coming out of Fresno State, we knew that Carr had an amazing arm and he's shown that in the NFL, even if it's in flashes. He's shown that he can accurately get the ball downfield on 20 plus yard passes, whether he's standing still in the pocket or throwing off platform. Now, I don't think he's on a Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, etc. level of ability to like make those high impact wow throws when his body's in crazy position. But compared to other guys closer to his tier with Derek Carr, guys like Kirk Cousins, Dak Prescott, Dalton, I do think Carr has a noticeably better arm. Now, one unfortunate thing about Carr is that he might have this awesome arm, but he is extremely conservative, uh, almost frustratingly so. Uh, you know, while he's shown more willingness to go vertical in the last few weeks, which may give you some optimism moving forward for him to expand this part of his game, he's ranked in the bottom 10 in deep ball percentage in two of his last four seasons, currently ranking 11th, so might as well be three of the last four seasons. And he's never been in the top 10 in terms of deep ball percentage, which is the percentage of your throws that travel 20 plus more yards. And this all contributes to one major flaw that I currently have on Derek Carr as far as his conservative tendencies. And we'll break down uh, that down a little further into the video. As far as his accuracy is concerned, I actually believe Carr is one of the more genuinely accurate QBs in the league. He operates very efficient in the short passing game. This is where he's most comfortable. Uh, and then his deep ball is very good, especially when throwing from a clean pocket. He does occasionally miss deep balls. So do most QBs in the NFL right now, maybe not named Russell Wilson. But in general, he is at worst solid throwing the ball deep. Now, for me, if you want to get into the A range of uh, impact accuracy and grading that trait, I do consider a quarterback's ability to make those off-platform throws as well. I like Carr's ability to do this, but I don't consider it elite to the degree of guys like Mahomes and Rodgers, Russell, to make those wow plays uh, with off-platform throws. So uh, let's grade all of these. I give Carr an A for arm talent, placing him in the top four to eight range as far as raw arm talent. A for quick accuracy. He's close to perfect with his quick accuracy. And then for uh, impact accuracy, we give him a B plus. He can throw the, the deep ball accurately and effectively, even if he has flaws as far as his instincts and willingness to attempt these deep throws. So next up we have pocket presence and processor, which to me are things that have actually held Carr back over the years, despite being accurate and very physically talented. So let's start with his processor, which I will say has developed nicely as he is aged. Carr has a general ability to go through several reads, make a quick decision, and execute the offense. I, I don't mean this in a bad way. 
He's a genuinely smart guy who understands coverages and makes the right throw more often than not. There are a few clips you can see of him here going through multiple reads, making quick decisions. He may not be Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers in this regard and making the right decision, but he doesn't throw an abnormal amount of poor decisions for a starting level quarterback. Uh, you could even make a case that as far as processing defenses and making the quote unquote right throw, he's towards the top, even ahead of guys like Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Carson Wentz, Lamar Jackson. This makes him the ideal fit for a nice play caller who the Raiders have in John Gruden and a team with a solid offensive line who can buy the time for the quarterback to make those processing decisions. Uh, some might call that a system quarterback and take that as a slight. And to be honest, I would consider it, at this point in time, Derek Carr to be a systems quarterback. That said, one thing I noticed watching Raiders tape is that Gruden really is allowed to open up the playbook as far as actual passing concepts are concerned. Watching teams with more flashy quarterbacks like Watson, Wentz, Lamar, and to be, be completely honest, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers under Matt LaFleur, you know, these guys are really running a lot of screens, RPOs, and uh, design schemes to get specific players open. With the Raiders, there's a lot less of that, to be completely honest. Gruden isn't using all of these. Now, there are a lot of these concepts in Gruden's offense, so don't get me wrong, but they're actually running a lot more traditional offense, and Carr is looking pretty good getting through his reads and running the offense. Now, he isn't perfect. You can see on this play, uh, he is... Uh, it's actually late in the game, the game on the line, and he, you know, gets through his reads, he gets through about his third read on this, he doesn't register that the linebacker is in a great position to jump this route, and it almost got picked and almost cost his team the game right there, they did end up losing the game. Uh, so again, he isn't perfect, but in general, I like his processor just from watching the tape, and I do grade him at a B plus. I think he's got a really solid understanding of um, defenses and stuff right now. So next up is going to be his pocket presence and play extension. And this is where I've had large criticisms of Derek Carr, and, and it's eerily similar to one now benched Marcus Mariota that pissed Titans fans off when I said Marcus Mariota wasn't the answer two months ago in a, a very similar video in this very series. Now, this criticism that we're talking about here, if you aren't familiar, is it might be third and eight. And the correct read will tell you to throw the ball short because everything else is covered up. And with Mariota and often Derek Carr, he will gladly take that throw, almost like a robot making plays because that's what he's supposed to do. To me, one of the biggest things, the biggest thing that separates what most consider as a system quarterback from an elite quarterback is that it factor. Hard to explain, right? But to me, that it factor is the ability to create big plays. The rule book of your scheme may tell you to throw the ball short of the line of scrimmage and trust the receiver to make a guy or two miss to move the chains. This may look good as a completion percentage in the box score, but way too often this is actually a low completion play when it comes to actually moving the sticks, and it just leads to a punt. If you aren't about to get sacked, or you have the physical ability to elude pressure and extend plays, the better play is to extend the play, whether that's inside the pocket or not, and find an alternative option that will move the sticks. And this doesn't require you to Houdini your way out of pressure and you know create some crazy play. Guys like Brady and Breeze have been manipulating pocket, uh, manipulating pressure inside the pocket with their great pocket presence and technique for decades. With Carr, just like Mariota, way too often over his career, he will take the conservative route. And this does bother me with him. In his tape, I still see many of these things pop up in his game. Now this season, I will say that he has shown signs of improvement compared to last year. On this third down conversion versus Green Bay, he doesn't panic as the blocking develops, he steps up in the pocket, makes a big time throw that moves the sticks. This trait is where I get genuinely interested with Derek Carr. And it got me thinking as I'm watching him play against the Lions and Matthew uh, Stafford that early in Stafford's career, he was not this capable pocket manipulating play extending player that he has become today. 
in 2016 when Megatron retired, I remember being very impressed with how Stafford has come along in regards to all of these things. I thought Stafford, uh, at that point in time, before that season, was more of a 16 to 22 range quarterback, a league average guy, until he started showing some of these ability to sense pressure and make these big plays outside of the scheme when the scheme broke down. So in Oakland right now, I think Gruden and these guys are actually doing an excellent job of making this a possible point of confidence in Carr's game and development. So for one, I think that they've been awesome at running the ball and getting Carr into third and manageable situations. Like just think about it, if you have a ton of third and fours as opposed to third and nine or worse, all of the sudden what you may consider his flaw in taking that check down on third down uh, on those situations, it becomes a strength because it may actually move the sticks if it's third and four. This has been the MO of Tom Brady's career. But the other thing that the Raiders are really doing to help Carr is just uh, excellent pass protection. He's trusting his blockers more, uh, hanging in there a bit longer, um, buying time to make those throws like he did versus Green Bay. So right now, overall, I give Carr a C- minus in regards to his play extension. He still shows some of this concerns, and while I think he's developing, I do think you can't ignore that it still pops up in his tape, and it's been a huge problem over his career. But I'm not willing to say that this specific trait can't continue to develop. In fact, I actually probably would have had him closer to the D range to start the season. So not all hope is lost there. I do think we're seeing signs of development. As for his pocket presence itself, I think it's pretty average. I don't consider to have that rare eye in the back of his head ability. A lot of you know what I'm talking about that many elite quarterbacks seem to have when it comes to sensing pressure. This to me is a purely instinctual trait that I would actually argue is a necessity for a quarterback to become an elite player. Uh, that's up for debate. But it's not like you can't get by with that eye in the back of your head as far as sensing pressure inside the pocket. And it's not like you can't become a plus starter without it. So while he doesn't have that trait necessarily, it's not like he's Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, or what we've actually been seeing from Daniel Jones where you have to hold your breath every time a, a blitzer comes free that he's gonna not sense it and fumble. So for pocket presence, I give Derek Carr a C plus. As for the last two traits, which are significantly less important and easier to evaluate, uh, his release is really nice. It's nothing insane, but definitely good. I give it an A, it's just really quick and solid. As uh, far as his speed is concerned, or his mobility, or whatever you want to define that as, it's pretty average for the modern quarterback. Uh, I will say that any sort of QB with a, a plus in this category should be able to beat one of the slowest linebackers in the league, Blake Martinez, to the edge for this touchdown and not fumble out the back of the end zone. Uh, but regardless, I, I think he's good, solid athlete, good modern quarterback, nothing crazy. Um, but he does have some ability to, you know, use his body for his benefit. Uh, so he gets a C plus for his speed or mobility, if you prefer that term. Uh, so at the end of the day, Carr is a really solid quarterback. And I actually walked away a little impressed uh, by some of the stuff he was doing. I think honestly, as we sit here today, uh, early November 2019, with Andy Dalton's benching, Derek Carr may be the new league midline standard for comparing who is a good and bad quarterback. I'd rank him right now in that 15 to 20 range with guys like Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, maybe Cam Newton, Dakota Prescott, Dalton himself, uh, maybe even the struggling Baker Mayfield, depending on how you look at him. You know, he's, to me, Derek Carr, somewhere in that 15 to 20 range. That said, he's only 28. He's shown signs of development, I, I believe, this year. I think we've learned as well from guys like Stafford, Alex Smith, Matt Ryan, that quarterbacks are unlike any other position, and many of these guys, especially the ones who prefer to throw from the pocket, as Carr does, are actually only hitting their prime around age 30. So if Carr can continue to trust his blockers and improve his propensity to create first downs, as we talked about with him and what Stafford did, um, you know, and then also mix in uh, continued aggression with the deep ball, which he's very capable of throwing. 
something we saw with Alex Smith at the end of his Chiefs career with Andy Reid. You know, some of these guys really do develop later in their career just through more experience. So Carr absolutely can be a guy that gets into the same tier with guys like Stafford, Smith, Matt Ryan, who may lack everything you look for as far as being an elite, you know, top echelon quarterback. But these are all really good quarterbacks capable of going on deep playoff runs if you can put just a few pieces around them. And I think Carr can absolutely get there. I'm not going to say it will or won't, but you definitely don't give up on Carr at this point. Uh, to the Raiders' good fortune as well, they have exactly three more years, a good amount of time to see more progression from Derek Carr with remarkably che uh, cheap control of Derek Carr. You know, he's sitting around that $20 million cap hit for the next three seasons, which is really cost-friendly when you look at the market right now. You know, they have the offensive line in place for years to come. Uh, with that contract, they have a fairly clear road to surrounding Carr with the talent he needs, and I do believe in Gruden as an offensive coach. So I've been very critical of this Raiders team for many of the moves and picks that they've made over the last 400 days or so. But let's end on a positive note, because as we sit here today, I can actually pretty confidently say that the Raiders are in a particularly nice position when it comes to their quarterback situation. And for now, if they can just improve their defense a little bit, get Carr another weapon or two in the receiving game, they can absolutely win and win a lot with Derek Carr as their quarterback moving forward. So please do hit that like button, guys. That's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, enjoy watching the Thursday Night Football game. I think it's going to be a good one. Cheers, as always, and we'll see you for the next one. Peace.